everyone. So glad you're here today. And my first piece of business is I have a new, Hi, everyone. So hold on a second. I've got com complete. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I have my iPhone on and on, on the show and I'm like hearing myself in the left corner here. Um, okay. New computer. I got myself a, a fancier Dell laptop because I could never read any of the comments that came in because they were so small. And I also wanted to try to get a non-reflective screen because I always have this horrible reflections off my glasses. So this is my improvement. My question is for you guys, can you hear me? Because I'm, I've got the mic there, but I'm in a kind of a new setup. So tell me if you can hear me before I do a silent show for two hours. And then you're all like, what is she saying? So somebody come in. Okay. All right. Claire, Veronica, Annie, Christine, <laughs> can you hear me? Say, yes, I can hear you. Clearly? Loud enough? Perfect. Okay. All right. I just wanted to be sure of that before I screw it up some more. So, you know, I <laughs> thank you, Julia, Trixie. Okay. Okay. You can all stop telling me you can hear me now. So I just wanted to be sure before I did a whole waste of a show here. So uh, let me do two things before I start. Uh, first of all, the thing I always forget, this thing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I say this because after I did the Derek Chauvin case, a whole bunch of people unsubscribed <laughs> because they didn't like my, my thoughts on the case, on my analysis. And as I say always, I do my analyses based on evidence, not on emotions. Um, but some people didn't take well to it, so they went bye-bye. And so they're gone. So anyway, uh, so please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. If I do something in the future you hate, then you can unsubscribe me like, like the other people did. <laughs> so that's one thing. Uh, also, today, this is my book called Only the Truth. Um, I put it up on Amazon for free today. I mean, it's $2.99 normally, so I'm not saving you a bundle. But because you're here today, I thought, I'm going to put this up. Every time I go on live, I'm going to try to, well, not every time, because they don't let you do it too often. But I put it up today for 24 hours live. So it will be, uh, this will be on Amazon for free. It's a wonderful psychological mystery. Um, takes place in, I think it takes, I haven't even read my own book in a long time, in Arkansas in, in the United States, in a small town. And it's it has a love story in there. Um, uh, a lot of people really, really like this book. It's one of my favorite things I've ever written. The main character is called Billy Ray, who I absolutely adore, and so does everybody else. And um, so if you want to have a free read, go to uh, Amazon. I'll put in Pat Brown, Only the Truth. You'll come up with this book. And it's free today until, let me think, what time in the morning? At 3 o'clock Pacific time. <laughs> I always get confused on all this. Anyway, it's going to be available for at least a few, at least until midnight tonight, wherever you are. So another six hours, nine hours. But if you want it right after the show, just go over there, click on it. You get it for free. So, okay. That is my basic business. Now, wait a minute. I have a few more comments coming in. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, this is true, Julie. Um, Julie, so sad that some people can't handle a difference of opinion on one thing before they're ready to walk away. And this is very, very true. And I, 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 I'm very busy. I don't, okay, that was an accident, but I'm, I'm happy you're very busy. Um, yeah, uh, one of the problems we've, we often have with not only a case that is as politically charged as the Derek Chauvin case is the fact that people get angry over cases in general. The Madeleine McCann case, you're either pro or con. Uh, Jean Bonnet, who did it? You know, if you say so-and-so did it and you say so-and-so did it, we have to hate each other. It, you know, and as a criminal profiler, one of the things I recognize is that we are, we are analyzing. That means profilers, detectives who are profilers, um, anybody, you, you out there in the world, we're analyzing things, trying to understand. And we are not necessarily right. And I, as a criminal profiler, am not necessarily always right. And, and there are some haters who will tell me I'm never right. <laughs> but, but I'm not always right. What I'm trying to do is bring information about the evidence to light and, and to analyze it so people can understand things. And whether that turns out to be exactly so or not so is, isn't the issue. It's, it's, when you come down to police cases, it's about 
the police have to analyze these different avenues. They have to analyze the evidence and decide what's the most important avenue to go down because you don't have much time to get evidence. Um, that 48 hours people talk about, man, is that accurate? 48 hours and then the evidence starts disappearing everywhere. Uh, and then after time, witness statements Go, go, go completely crappy. And then you've got then you've got the media involved messing up everybody's mind. So for, for the detectives, what they need to do is understand the evidence as well as possible so they can cover the avenues, not necessarily just one avenue, because what if that one avenue isn't it? And you won't know if it's it until you examine as much as you can. Now, of course, that doesn't mean you examine every avenue, because I know working many cases, I've had people say, oh, I'm pretty sure that, you know, the man who herds the cows down the street did it. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, no, I'm not going to go investigate that. It's not everybody. It's not Martians. I'm not going to go there. So you definitely have avenues you're going to follow more than other avenues. And if you put out a tip line, let me tell you, every crackpot in the universe calls up because here's the reality of it. If you put out a tip line, let's say, do you know who did this? And let's say that person actually said something to his girlfriend. You know how many people should be calling you about real information? Maybe one or two. Maybe his girlfriend, his mother. Maybe a friend that he knows that he thought he was acting weird. Maybe three people. But 30,000 people call the tip line. I can guarantee you 29,997 people don't know shit. And, and they're talking crap. They're, they're, they have ideas. They're, they're, a lot of them think they're psychic. And they say, oh, I, I know I or had a dream last night. I mean, so the, the detectives have to pour through a whole lot of nonsense, which is so frustrating. So they really need to look at the evidence, 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 and, and that's what's important. Um, and so today, as I do this bit on Jean Bonnet, who, which I haven't actually looked at in, wow, okay, <laughs> 20 years? Has that been that long? It's, almost, it's been 20 years. 20 years. Oh, here, I just want to comment on this, Daniel. Never waste time just looking at my face. Listen while putting things away. <laughs> One of the advantages, people say, why don't you do a podcast? Because people don't have to look at you. I'm like, you know, people don't have to look at me when I'm doing YouTube either. They can just listen to me. They're not required to look at me. So good idea. Good idea. I just want to read what Angela say. I think it's important to have differing opinions. Critical thinking should be welcome and people should respect that without jumping down your throat. I enjoy a healthy debate. You know, we learn a lot from other people's opinions. Uh, you, you would think maybe as a profiler, I would disregard everybody else's opinions. Oh, well, I'm a criminal profiler. Who the hell are you? You know, I've been in this business 20 years. What do you know that I don't know? No, no. I mean, I know some profilers say that, but I have learned things from people who are not profilers. Maybe they have more knowledge about a specific area of something, or maybe they just came up with an idea. I'm, I'm thinking, damn, I never even crossed my mind. Wow, that's, that's great. Because the more input you have, the more you have to speculate on and to think, does the evidence support that or doesn't it? Uh, it just gets your, your brain going. So nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. So I think that people need to get off their high horses you know, about, you know, I'm I, I, the way I think is the only way to think. And if you don't think my way, I have to hate your guts, you know, <laughs> but apparently people get very emotional about things, which is interesting to me because a lot of times they're, they're emotional about cases that have nothing to do with them. You know, um, take a, take, take Jean, uh, Jean Bonnet or even Madeleine McCann <laughs> cases, are, you know, Madeleine McCann I've worked on for a very long time, but I do not know Madeleine McCann. Uh, I never met the little girl. Um, uh, I've never met her parents. Uh, I don't know anybody involved. I don't know anybody involved with the Jean Bonnet case. I mean, it wasn't like she was my, my granddaughter's playmate or something so that I would have my heart broken. Now, do I feel sympathy? Yes. Do I feel empathy? Yes. But I'm not truly emotionally connected. And I think some people get themselves overly emotionally connected. And then that ruins their ability to, to be rational and to respect other people's opinions, but eh, that's the way it goes. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that's life. People are, people are that way about a lot of things. So I have people be that way about movies. Have you had that happen? They say they went to a movie and you go, oh yeah, I hated that movie. And suddenly they're not your friend anymore because <laughs> you, you hated a movie they liked. You're like, you know, really, you know, you, you can't take criticism. I'm not criticizing your 
opinion. I just said, I didn't like the movie. It wasn't my thing. Um, you know, I mean, <laughs> but people do that. It's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> you know, I say, I, one thing I've learned as I get older, there's that, you know, that's the way people, that's the way people are. That's the way humans are. And uh, the other thing I've learned over time is that the most important thing in life is uh, ethics, morals, being an honest person, working hard, loving your friends and family. And after that, everything is eh, not that big a deal. Anyway, let's go on. Oh, you always get that with movies. Oh, Claire, I always get that with movies. <laughs> Isn't that weird? I mean, I don't understand it. I mean, it's like really, okay, you know. But, and I'm a very, and, and I have to, and as a, as a writer, you know, I always say this, you know, there are people who hate my books. You know, they have the right to hate my books. Um, if everybody loved my books and nobody else's, nobody else would sell. And if everybody loved everybody else's books and hated mine, then I'd never sell any books. So, you know, if you if everybody had different opinions, more people have an opportunity to participate. <laughs> so that's the way it goes. Anyway, all right, now to the to the to the show. Okay, now, all right, I'm going to. Okay, this is a tricky one to start with because I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to try to break this up into groups so that things are more understandable. It's so this case is so overwhelming because it's so bizarre that a lot of times it's really hard to figure out where to start with this. But I'm going to start with these points. I'll start with stranger homicide. I'll go to friend homicide. Then I'll go to family homicide. Okay, uh, because those those are the three basic things that we're talking about. I'm, so I'm going to start with with well, if I can find my picture, my picture's gone. Where is my picture? Oh, 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 oh. Where'd it go? Is that it? Oh yeah, okay, there it is. Couldn't, couldn't, you know, when the pictures are small, they look really weird. So you can't tell what you're looking at. Okay, <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is their house. Um, now, it's one hell of a big house, which leads me to two conclusions. All right, let's say, because this is one of the theories, somebody came into the house and removed Jean Bonnet from her bedroom, somehow took her down to the, the, the wine, you know, the little wine room there, and killed her in there, and then left the home. So somehow they got in, they went up to her room. You know, and before you say nobody, nobody kills anybody in the house, nobody commits a sexual homicide and kills somebody in the house, that's not true. Um, there's an interesting case in Virginia and a guy, a mother, it was terrible. She went into her teenage daughter's room. She lived in an apartment. It wasn't a big apartment. I think it was a two room apartment. You know, she had her room. I think she was a single mom. Daughter had her room. And then there was just a small apartment. She goes into her, her you know, it's time for her daughter to go to school. So she goes into the, uh, the room and knocks on the door and says, Hey, are you, are you, are you going ready for school? Gone to school. She opens the door and doesn't see anybody in there. She assumes her daughter went to school. I think I'm, I'm trying to remember the story correctly. If I'm wrong, oh well, nobody else knows the story but me. Anyway, except for the mother of this poor, poor girl. Anyway, some, somewhere later in the day, she didn't return from school. So the mother went back into the bedroom and found that her daughter was dead underneath the covers of that bed. In other words, she thought her daughter had left the room, but she was actually fully covered and under the covers. Some guy had come in the second floor window of an apartment raped and murdered the girl and left. And that is an absolute case. It does happen. The problem we have with the this Jean Bonnet case is that's one freaking huge mansion. You know, I, I never realized how big it was because I always saw, you know, see this part right here? We always see the front of the house kind of looking like a chalet. Never realized that the whole house is just massive. I mean, it's massive. So in theory, Sean Bonnet could have been killed in another part of the house and nobody would know. In other words, it's so private. In other words, down in that cellar, four floors down, I think it's three or four floors down, whatever. It's so far away that you could pretty much do what you want and not be worried about anybody interrupting. That is true. However, you also have to go into the house and this is a big ass house. So you got to know the layout of this house. How do you find Jean Bonnet? Do you just, as a stranger, just like wander through the house, peeking in every room? 
you know, this is a fancy person's house. This is a wealthy house. This is not a small trailer or something. This is a huge house. And you got to know the people there, A, might have um, uh, alarm systems, dogs, uh, you know, just whatever. But, you know, you have to be able to go through their entire house looking for this kid. And then you got to get the kid and you got to figure out where the heck to go, you know, where the heck to go in this house and hide and do this to her and then leave her there. Um, it, it, it's a stretch to imagine that a complete stranger would go through all of this trouble. Um, the next thing you have to wonder about a complete stranger going to all of this trouble is after he gets into the house, um, or let's, there's two different theories. One is that the, he was hiding in the house until the family got home. And then after they all went to bed, then he went up the stairs. Um, that's a long time to be sitting in the house. And it is claimed that maybe during that time he wrote the ransom note, which is pretty weird. Um, and then the other thought is that they came home and that somehow he got in and then he got her and then he killed her. And then he wrote a ransom note. Um, you know, when you're a sexual, uh, you commit a sexual homicide, it is pretty rare that you would read a, leave a ransom note, period. Because once you leave the house, you don't really give a crap what happens. You just want to get out of there as quickly as possible after you have killed the person. Uh, there's no point staying around. And, there, and where you, you could theorize that he wrote this long ransom note so that that would set the police in a different direction. They wouldn't look through the house and maybe that would give him time. But really, all you have to write is, I kidnapped your kid and leave that there. That's it. And then get the hell out of there. So this is a story that what I'm going to, talk about a lot here is that there are things that are, are possible, but there are things that are probable. There are things that A does not equal B. And so when you look at a stranger homicide, this is such a bizarre such a circumstance that any stranger encountering a house like this would think it was a brilliant idea to go into a rich person's house. Also remember, generally speaking, rich people get some really good well, not in this case, it just went to hell. But anyway, generally speaking, if you were if you're you're a character, right? You want to you want to do something to a little girl. You know, it's easier grabbing them on the way home from school. It's easier to go to a place where parents aren't paying attention. Maybe there's drugs and whatever. Kids are running around the streets. Nobody's paying attention to the kids. You grab them, pull them into the woods. Um, or maybe maybe you see some little girl. She goes into a house and you think, well, that'll be an easy little trailer to get into. Uh, why would you pick a rich person's house where you would assume that there's going to be a huge police investigation. And then you have to get through the house. You've got to grab the kid. You've got to assume, how, how does he know John Ramsey doesn't have a gun? He's got a fancy place to take care of. Does John Ramsey not have a firearm? They might shoot the guy in the process. I mean, really, does this make any sense? And then to spend your time writing a long, 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 long note, as Trixie points out, a longest ransom note in history. Correct. And also... A far too detailed note. So if you were a complete stranger, Claire, yes, what the hell would you be knowing all these things about John Ramsey for? Why would you even know who the hell he is or even give a shit who he was? You know, yeah, the, yeah, absolutely. Veronica, just the ransom note was weird. And the ransom note is really, uh, is going to be possibly an interesting thing. Okay, now, Angela, I'm going to go, go here with you with this. Okay. They had a lot of people over at their house, including the friend that dressed as Father Christmas. This is correct. Didn't he have an unhealthy interest in Jean Bonnet? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I don't know about the unhealthy interest in Jean Bonnet. You know, uh, it, it's, a, it's a tricky thing when you, when you have a man who likes a child. I mean, as possibly because he likes children. I'm not talking in a sexual way. Just because he thinks children are cute. I mean, there are people who adore children. Um, and they're not perverts. They just love children. And, and they, they think they're, you know, they like to, they like to help them and play with them, give them gifts. I mean, they just like children. I mean, we've gotten to such a state in our society where we think that everybody who likes a child is a pervert. <laughs> that isn't true. Maybe he just, you know, enjoys children. And uh, I can't remember if he ever had any himself. And sometimes people who don't have their own children, you know, they live like an uncle to other children. It doesn't mean they're a pervert. So, but, okay, so let's take a look at the situation, though. Um, all right. Oh, that's that's a good point. I want to, okay, I'm going to bring that out here, because before we go on, not, Desiree, very good. Not to mention an intruder would have to make the garage out of Patsy's paintbrush and a rope found in another bedroom. Ludicrous. Well, there you go. All right, so that's correct. Uh, you know, it, it would be weird if you were planning to... Uh, 
take this child and sexually assault her, chances are you have like a rape kit because you're kind of into that stuff. You know, um, I mean, theoretically, he could have gotten to the basement and found these things and said, oh, Eureka, cool. I want to try this one out. It's possible. It's possible. But the whole concept of a stranger going through all that house is not probable. Okay, so now let's go to the friend one because that was the second one, the friend issue. That would be more likely than a stranger. And the reason that would be is, first of all, he does know the layout of the house. He does. He might have a way of getting in the house. Who knows? Could a copy the key? I don't know, whatever. Who knows why, how he could get in the house, but not through that silly window, because actually it wasn't a very big window. And the guy you're talking about is kind of bigger, I think. But anyway, um, uh, that's a good point, Julie. It seems to be accepted if an older woman likes kids. Just She's just a nice old grandma, but men get a bad rap, mostly looked at as a pervert, not a nice old grandpa. Absolutely true. And, you know, God help you if you put the child on your lap. Ah! You know, you know, must be playing with them um, in a bad way. Uh, that's very true. Uh, so now let's go to the friend. A friend would know, a really close friend would know the layout of the house. If he had an unhealthy interest, a sex, unhealthy sexual pedophilia thing going about Jean Bonnet, does it make sense that he at least, if he went and said, okay, I know they're coming home later. I'm going to hide down here. Um, you know, I'm going to get ready for this. Uh, I know where her bedroom is. I know how they behave. Hey, I may, I can maybe wear my, maybe I can wear my Christmas outfit and Jean Bonnet will follow me anywhere. You know, you could say that. Um, uh, and you could say that therefore then he brought her down to the basement. He had, he did this really perverted thing with her. And while he was waiting for the family to come home, he wrote a really long note on their pad because he wanted to distract from a possible somebody who knows your house killed your child. Um, so therefore, this is a, a fake uh, a kidnapping and look elsewhere. Don't look this way, you know. Yeah, okay. Is that more likely? What about the man? What about what man in Thailand? <laughs> Veronica, what about what man in Thailand? Ah, yeah. uh, uh, you can uh, when you send me something on that because I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, but there, uh, yes, it is more likely that a friend would have committed this crime than a stranger. Absolutely. A friend of the family who was familiar with the house, familiar with Jean Bernet, familiar with their habits, more likely. And I would say that definitely, oh, yeah, they all confess. Yeah, the one who confessed, they all confess. I mean, there's been Jean, uh, Jean-Marc Carr, who is a complete moron, and his girlfriend actually wrote me a nasty. She was very upset with me because I said something bad about Jean-Marc Carr, and she's and she's like, "Oh, how could you say that about my my boyfriend?" And I'm like, "Yeah, well, you're you're like a narcissistic lunatic because why the hell are you hanging out with a dude like Mar Jean-Marc Carr?" Uh, lots of people confess to stuff they didn't do because they want that kind of attention. Uh, it means nothing um, unless. It just means nothing, especially after the media has been out there for so darn long. They got all the details. They can they can trump up any scene they want, but there's no proof that they went there. Oh, here's a good point, Desiree. A plus an intruder prepared a bowl of pineapple and milk for Jean Bonnet. Yeah, that, that's highly unlikely. Well, I mean, it could be Santa, you know, in other words, he could say, come on down. I'm going to make you some pineapple. Theoretically, unlikely because that's a waste of time. Uh, generally speaking, when people want to commit a crime, they commit a crime. They, I mean, you can, you, it, people confuse that with um, grooming. Like if you're on the internet and you're grooming, you're trying to get, you know, a kid person into your interest. Uh, you might spend a little more time, but even those guys on the internet, let me tell you something, you know what they do? They, they open up like 10 screens and they go, do you like sex? Do you like sex? Do you like sex? And they, and they go, what are you talking about now? What are you talking about? Mom, maybe. Okay. You. And they go straight for the one that shows interest and they knock off the other nine. They don't have a lot of patience for that either. They go straight to the sexual stuff pretty quickly to see who will fall for it. So psychopaths, sexual psychopaths don't have tremendous patience. So that they're going to waste their time doing something they don't need to do, probably not. But let's go back to, okay, so now we have the friend possibility. That is more possible than um, a stranger. However, here's what the police should do in those instances. They got three avenues. Look at this avenue because you don't want to you want to find out that you've got the one freaky flea case that turns out to be a stranger. The probability is very low, but you just want to be careful. Now the friend thing, 
that's a little higher. So you definitely want to take a look at the friends, bring them in, interview them, blah, 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 get their alibis. You definitely want to do that. Then you've got the more likely situation, which is nobody else entered that house, that the family was there from the time they came home with the children till the time that Jean Bonnet was supposedly discovered missing. Um, so this is obviously, you know, in the beginning, they may not have thought this was what happened. Um, and let me talk about the crime scene issue because, and yes, this is true. The brother did say he was eating the pineapple. His prints are on the dish and also on the glass, I think. Patsy's are there. So yes, there was some pineapple. Well, I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a, there's a point to that, but not, I don't think, what the point people think. Um, so anyway, when the, I'm not going to go and, and disparage the detective's name who came because a lot of people have attacked her, but I'll have to say this. There's some people say she didn't do anything wrong. She did what she thought she was doing because it was, you know, she thought it was a kidnapping and the kid wasn't in the house. So I'm going to disagree with that entirely. Uh, I think the, the crime scene was handled horribly, uh, absolutely dreadfully. I think they were, I think basically the problem is there's a lot of times people get involved in things, uh, maybe haven't done this kind of thing as long as all that. Maybe they don't have this kind of scenario before and they go with the gut and the gut is wrong. All right. So from the time Patsy Ramsey claimed it was a kidnapping, that entire house should have been a crime scene. Uh, first of all, you don't know that it's true. So you don't know if the, the child is there or not there. Secondly, you don't know what evidence was left behind in any location in that house, the bedroom, the stairs, the doors, the, any place, you do not know where evidence is left. So you've got absolutely no reason to release that sign and let people running all over the place. However, of course, the family did call, call other people first and have them run all over the place. So, um, you know, the problem also was a family, hmm, I believe uh, I'll get to that in a bit about some of these strange behaviors, but the, the crime scene was handled horribly. And consequently, uh, a lot of evidence might have been lost, um, not discovered. Uh, and also the fact that, you know, they, they should have separated the, the Ramses and, and talked to them separately, not let them all hang together for, even if it's for a short period of time, whatever. Um, I think the the, the idea that, oh, this is a kidnapping and somebody's image that, that somebody got in the house, you know, again, it's a crime scene. I don't understand how you could not lock this whole house down. Somebody got the child and took the child out if it's a kidna kidnapping. That could leave a tremendous amount of evidence. I, I don't I don't get it. I just really don't get it. I, I, stuff happens. So anyway, uh, so let's go now to, oh, well, that's meaningless. Uh, Mary? Boulder's not known for murders. That, 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 that really doesn't mean anything terribly much. I mean, all you need is one person for a murder. So, I mean, uh, you know, we can't, we can't say, oh, well, there aren't murders around here, so it must be the parents. No, I mean, that's just not true. Um, all you need is one. I lived in a town um, born, uh, in Maryland, uh, and there have been no murders in 30 years, and then a woman was murdered. So, hey, for 30 years, there were no murders, but then there was one, and it was a stranger homicide. So, you know, we can't, we can't go with that. So, but let's start looking at some of the issues which I have with what happened next. All right, so let's look at the 911 call because one of the things that's going to happen when, when you deal with this kind of thing is that you, you're going to look at, they we're talking about behaviors now because we're, th we're theorizing at this point that it's unlikely, it's, near nil that it's a stranger homicide. It's a possibility it's a fr friend homicide, somebody who's familiar with the the, uh, uh, the Ramses and their home and Jean Bonnet. And then we have the family. So now we're gonna look at the family and we're gonna see, is there anything that throws up red flags with the family? Oh, oh, <laughs> okay, never mind. Sorry, Mary. I meant they weren't, aren't experienced managing murders. Now that is absolutely a great point. Absolutely. And this is, the, yeah, that is, that is a freaking good point because we always assume that people, that the detective has seen everything. A lot of de detectives have seen no such thing, especially in certain towns. You're right. So they've never seen a murder. They don't know what to do with it. They haven't had a kidnapping. They don't know what to do with it. They might have burglaries, robberies, this and that, but they've never done that. As a matter of fact, that, that case I was talking about in Maryland, it was, it was handled originally by the park police who, guess what? 
had never experienced managing murders. So you are absolutely correct on that. Um, sorry, I misinterpreted what you said. See, mm -hmm. terrible profile. Uh, <laughs> but he, the, the Park Police had never, never experienced that. Uh, so they had no, they had not necessarily great skills. And as I always point out, great many detectives don't get training. That isn't some, that's something that doesn't happen as much as you think it does. They don't receive training. Maybe they go to a, one little course here and then 20 years goes by and they don't get another one. So absolutely, that is, that is so true. Um, so, so let's go to, let's go to the 911 call. And uh, <laughs> this was, I have to say, what happened to us? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm working on my screen here. What's going on here? Why am I not seeing the top of my screen? Hmm. Okay. Something. I'm oh, sorry. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why I'm not seeing the very top of this. Hold on a second. Uh, so it's a new computer. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm trying to figure out why I'm not seeing this correctly. Crap. Um, as there is a, I'm going to, I'm going to look it up over here. Um, I'm going to go to my, I'm going to go to my other computer. I'm going to pull up because for some reason the top of this is missing, I believe. What do you see on the top of this? I see we have a note and our daughter's gone, but that's not what's supposed to be up here. Um, does anybody see that? Does anybody see anything else for that? Okay, hold on a second. Let me pull it up because I do have it here on my other screen. Hold on a second. Is that what I do with everything? Okay, let me look on my. Because I want, I want to, I want to point out the top of this note. Okay. Oh yeah, it's, for some reason it's missing here. Okay, I don't know if it's missing there, but yeah, something's wrong. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so. It's a 911 emergency call, and they say police, and they say what's going on, and her first thing is 755 15th Street. Now. You could say, well, that's good. She wants to get them there as quickly as possible. But it's also kind of weird that she answered that with location as opposed to what's going on. Then she says, what is going on there, ma'am? And this comment, we have a kidnapping. Hurry, please. We have a kidnapping. Not my daughter's, my daughter's been kidnapped. That is what you should be saying. Um, my daughter's been kidnapped. Because the most important thing, when you look at it, when you look at um, a 911 call, it's a very interesting. You look at the first statement, the second statement, the third statement, at, in order of what's the most important thing. The most important thing in this was we have a kidnapping. In other words, I want you to know there has been a kidnapping. Not that my daughter's been kidnapped, but there has been a kidnapping. Believe us, it's a kidnapping. That is a very concerning thing, as she said. And then she said, we have a, there's a note left. That's the second most important thing that there was a note left. And then finally, our daughter is gone. Okay. The third most important thing is your daughter is gone. But the most important things are there. We have a kidnapping. Note the kidnapping and the note. Those are two important things. Kidnapping and note. But our, but our, um, our daughter is third. And then she says another interesting thing. My daughter is gone. And that I do have up there. Right there. My, our daughter is gone. Well, yes. Your daughter's been kidnapped, theoretically. But gone is another word for died. Not here anymore. Not with us. So it's it's a kind of one of those things. Now, 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 now mind you, I, I'm not totally unreasonable on this because I know sometimes when people do statement analysis, um, they go, this is what it means. I don't know. Sometimes people do talk in a particular way. I've said things that have been misconstrued, um, you know, and I go, no, that's not what I meant. Or I just have a funny way of saying something. So I will say, we're talking about theories here. We're talking about interesting stuff. I'm not saying that means exactly that, but th that is very interesting that she would say that. And then it is asked, um, I know, uh, so explain to me what's going on. Okay. A note was left and your daughter is gone. Yes. How old is your daughter? She's six years old. She is blonde, six years old. I, the blonde thing is kind of weird just because, I mean, maybe she wants it to be identified. Everybody sees a blonde child, but kind of a, kind of a funny response in, in that. Uh, then how long ago was this? I don't know. I just found a note and my daughter is missing. 
again, I just found a note. Just is an interesting word. Justice often comes before a lie. I've, I've just noticed that in so many statement analysis. I just, it's an unnecessary, it's an unnecessary word. In other words, when did this happen? I don't know. I, I found a note and my daughter's gone, uh, is missing. Okay, fine. But I found a note, not I just found a note. I just found a note. I just happened to find a note. That's a, cause does it say who took her? What does it say who took her? I don't know. There is a ransom note here. It's a ransom note. It says SBTC victory, please. Now I'm not going to go, um, I'm not going to go on about whether she, you know, about this whole thing, about what part she's saying. She is, you know, at this point, you know, you are out of your mind. So, you know, it, 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 you know, it, it, it's very hard to be correct about, you know, get everything, hear everything right, say everything right. Um, do you know how long she's been gone? I don't know. Please. We just got up. Here's the just word again. We just got up and she's not here. Oh my God, please. Please send somebody. Okay, so we, those are, it is a concerning 911 call that makes me wonder, um, really makes me wonder because that's a, the, some of those things are just not quite right for, for a 911 call. Now let's go on to what happened next. I hopefully have gotten this in order here and now it's gonna be missing on me. What? Why am I having trouble with this today? I swear to God. Things have just gone missing. Okay, so now I'm going to have to pull it up from someplace else. That's strange. Okay. Hmm. Odd. There you are. Okay, so I want to point out what happened first, second, third, fourth, because these are really, these are really important things uh, as to what exactly happened. All right, so I'm going to find the place that it actually said those things and disappeared off my thing here. Okay, so let's find out what happened first. Okay. All right. So let's go back to, I'm just going to go back to the house and sit here for a while. Maybe I'll do this. Ah, notes on the stairs. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. Now I'm going to go through a few things that happened, which I thought were very unique. Okay. So supposedly um, there is a two o'clock, somebody, a neighbor hears a scream. And, and we don't know whose scream that was. It could be Jean Monnet's scream. It could be Patsy Ramsey's scream, but supposedly 2 a.m., which I think is an interesting point in time. Then 5.30 a.m., Patsy Ramsey gets up to make coffee. You know, the one thing I don't know, and I don't know if I see, saw, but anybody, um, can I, does anybody remember this? Because just, I just realized I didn't think about this. It's 5.30 a.m., did she normally get up at 5.30 a.m.? And then that's really early, considering they were busy to really late that night. Why is she up so early? Does anybody know if this is a normal thing that she gets up at the crack of dawn or before the crack of dawn to make coffee? I mean, I'm sorry, but I don't get up at 5.30 in the morning. Even if one of my kids were little, I mean, you know, sometimes they had to come in and go, Mom, wake up, Mom, wake up. You know, 5.30 in the morning, that's really early. Oh yeah, they were taking a trip. Okay, okay, so there was that plan. Okay, thank you. I just couldn't remember they're flying to Atlanta. Still free. What time were they flying to Atlanta? Wasn't that in the afternoon? Anybody know what time they were flying? I don't know. I can't remember, but it just seems so early. And she reports finding a two-page, actually it was three-page, note on the back staircase stating that Jean Bonnet had been kidnapped. Okay, and then 5.45, Shortly after finding the note, Patsy calls family friends Fleet and Priscilla White and John and Barbara Fernie. Okay, then. Really? Really? You find a note that says your daughter's been kidnapped. The first thing you do is run and find out she's, she's actually in the house. And the next thing I do while the phone is in my hand is... Say like 2000. Do we have cell, cell phones? <laughs> Whatever phones in my hand, and call. I, I would call the police very quickly. I wouldn't call my friends. The police, I'd call the police first because, after all, your friends are not going to find your missing child. It's your maybe around 6 30. I'm really that long, that early. Okay, thank you. I thank you. I, I, I just couldn't remember that. It's, it's, it's been 20 years since I haven't looked at this case. Oh, uh, 6 30 a.m. What that? That's off. Well, since she's not, she's not up early enough. <laughs> That seems, that seems weird. But anyway, um, okay, so you call your friends. You don't call the police. I say your friends are not going to find your child. 
unless your friends stole your child, unless the friends are the ones who are kidnapping, that, you know, that makes no sense. You call the police first and then, then you call your friends to come and comfort you. That makes more sense. So I, I found that really, really, really weird. So, so let's look at what happens next. All right. So, okay. The next weird thing that I think happens, let's see if it's in, let's see if we get here. Okay. I don't want that. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm looking for the next. Okay. So then, then the police start showing up. There are about a bunch of officers at the scene. The friends have come to help search the home. Now it's a big house. So I mean, maybe they did need some help searching the whole huge house, but I mean, I would do it methodically. I would go through every room methodically really quickly. Or I'd say, John, you take the down. You, John, you start in the cellar. I'll start in the top. Something's just fishy about that. Just weird. Okay, eight ten a.m. The first detective. Now the first, uh, the between six and eight p.m. There were there were officers on the scene. It took quite a while for the crime uh, crime scene investigators are also present, and a victim's advocate. And at eight ten, the first detective on the case is Linda Arndt, and she fails to secure the crime scene, and that is for darn sure. Uh, it was not. It was not secured. Sorry, Linda but that bugs me. So the weirdest thing I think is coming up next. Now, they're waiting, they're everybody, I think a lot of people know this, but they're waiting for the, the, the call. This is the call that's going to come between, is it, is, it, is it eight and 10? I know I have that on, hold on a second. I have that on one of the notes. Where's the note on that? Um, is it the first note or the second note? Or is it, I, 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 stop, I have these for something different. Um, but uh, but they, it was, I think it was between eight and 10, something like that. Somebody can remember, please do, because I can't remember. Um, anyway, 10 o'clock, I believe, was the, the time by which they were supposed to call. Now, one of the things that the, the detective did notice was that when 10 o'clock came and went, neither one of the Ramses were particularly interested in the fact that it didn't come. They weren't like freaked. Now, I know that for me, this is my phone. That phone is here. When 10.01 comes, I'm hysterical. I'm hysterical. Hey, I'm going to watch till 10.02. And I'm going to watch till 10.03. And I'm going to start yelling at the at the at the police why aren't they calling why aren't they calling why aren't they calling what are we what are we gonna do they're not calling and what are we gonna do and i'm gonna be completely flipped out did not happen the ramses were not flipped out they were not responsive this is one of the key issues in this whole case it's abnormal behavior now no, I'm not saying the parents are guilty. As I say, these are theories. These are just examining evidence. I'm not saying the parents are guilty. They could be really weird people. But I can say, uh, for a fact, it's a very weird behavior, which sends up red flags to the detectives who go, how come you don't care that the phone call didn't come in? The phone call is going to save your daughter. Why aren't you worried about that? You know, um, so... Uh, Oh, oh, that, that's a, that's a point. Um, Julie says, I'm wondering if the kidnapper somehow found out I called the police and maybe just got my daughter killed. There is a good thing to freak out over. Oh my God, I screw this whole thing up. I say, have they killed, have they killed my daughter? They're not going to call. No, <laughs> kill my daughter. It's just, um, it is, that is so, so freaking weird. Um, now, So now this goes on. Now then, then, then this thing happens, and this is one of the next really big things. At 10.30 a.m., I had to go look this up a couple times because I remembered this from years ago, but I kept thinking, this is so, just, I, am I remembering this correctly? At 10.30 a.m., John Ramsey goes missing for at least an hour, leaving the house to supposedly pick up the mail. It's later determined this couldn't be true because the family's mail is delivered through a slot in the door. Okay, I don't care if I, I don't I don't care if it is true. I don't care if it's true. 
The problem is, who the hell would walk out of their house? Even if the phone call didn't come, the next thing you're going to be doing is praying that the phone call comes in 15 minutes, in 30 minutes, in 45 minutes, in an hour. That, that phone call, that phone call has to ring. I can't go away because the minute the minute he's gone for an hour, what if the phone call comes in and he's not there to run to the bank and get the money to save his daughter? Just to walk away out of the house. What the hell? Who leaves for mail? What could be in the mailbox? It was so important. If you were going to Atlanta, you weren't going to get your damn mail anyway. So why is this? Why do you even need to leave the house? And why would you leave the house? This is such a bizarre and red flag issue. I can't get away from it. That just, that just, that just makes you go, there's something freaky about this. And here's the thing. Why would you leave the house? There must be a reason to leave the house. It sure isn't for male. It sure isn't because you don't care because you don't care about your daughter. Well, you know she's probably, in my opinion, you know there's no phone call coming, which means to me you know more than than you're saying at that point. But there is a bunch of stuff missing from the house. Apparently they never were able to find. Well, I don't know Did when, when John Ramsey, and I don't know this, if anybody knows this, um, tell me, tell me about this. Tell me if anybody knows, because again, I've, there's so much information on this case and I've kind of forgotten half of what I used to know. Um, how, does anybody know if the police made sure that when John Ramsey left the house, he was patted down from head to toe to make sure he was not taking anything. I mean, you know, it doesn't take much to hide a few objects in your, your clothing and get out of the house with it and dump it someplace if you don't want that stuff found in your house because you didn't have time to get rid of it before. Because if you had left the house early, you would have left footprints in the snow and you didn't want your footprints in the snow. This would be a perfect time to say, oh, you know, I, I, let me, I got it. I, you know, I'll find the stuff I hid, put it in my whatever I'm wearing, get it out of the house and dump it somewhere. Um, so that is, um, that's interesting. If anybody knows he got, if he got patted down from head to toe before he left the house, I'd like to know that because for some reason I just, yeah, I just don't know. That's correct, Claire. Is he disposing of evidence or isn't he? I don't know, but I, you know, I find that the, the leaving of the house unbelievable. And then the next thing he does, um, where was the part? Oh, okay. Then, uh, then they do the search of the house and oddly enough, John finds her body at that point in the, in the room, um, and then carries her upstairs and tampers with the evidence. Okay. Part of me says, if I were a parent and found my daughter lying on the floor, I might tamper with that evidence too. Uh, just because, I mean, you, you in theory think I'm just, I found my daughter down. But you know, your brain sometimes doesn't kick in. Sometimes you can't believe she's dead. And you see tape on her mouth and you want the tape off of her. And and you want to bring her, you know, you want to bring her up so they can call 911. I can understand why a parent would contaminate that scene and move the body. I can also understand why someone who was involved might want to contaminate the scene and move the body. So you got two sides uh, of this. Oh, yes. Veronica, I don't recall Mr. Ramsey getting patted down. You know, I don't know. Uh, oh, what's this? What's this one? So, uh, I don't think he got patted down, Pat, because he would have complained about it. Patsy left the house in her ankle length fur coat. Hmm, that's interesting. So you, some of you all know lots more than I do for all the details because I don't remember them. So then let's see. Oh, and then at 1.40 p.m., the other weird thing is John Ramsey calls his pilot and is allegedly heard asking him to prepare a plane to Atlanta. Meanwhile, law enforcement instructs the family not to leave town. Hello, red flag number three. Wait a minute, what? Wait a minute, what? Wait, wait, okay. <laughs> okay, you do know your daughter's dead by then. Okay, I get it, okay, because what time did he find her daughter? Okay, so 40 minutes ago, he finds his daughter dead in the house. He knows she has not been kidnapped, at least outside of the house. And within that amount of time, you were ready to leave town. You know, most parents, when something's happened to a child, child's been murdered, they want to be, see, this is the police. I'm giving a hand right here. This is the parents. They want to be glued to the freaking police, glued to them, glued to them, on their door, knocking, standing in the room, harassing them, telling them, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? As a matter of fact, the police lose their minds. 
because the parents won't, the families usually won't leave them alone. They're hounding them constantly. It seems a little odd to me that you prefer to be far away from the police where you can just do stuff by telephone. Hey, how's it going over there? You know, oh, you find me? Okay, no. I, I know you're not supposed to be in your house, but I would want to be like they went, eventually went to a friend's house. Yes, I'd want to be in my friend's house as close as I could be, at least for the first week or whatever. And then over time, maybe I'd say, okay, I just want to go home to some other area where people come for me. I get that. But within 40 minutes, hello, that's just not normal. Um, and this is, this is an interesting, John carries Jean-Benet up the stairs under his arm like a football horse on who would carry their child like that? I don't know. I mean, some of these things, um, oh, okay. enjoy the book. <laughs> um, some of these things, um, hello. Uh, some things, yeah, they're weird, but there's a difference between weird and odd and don't make any sense under the circumstances. What doesn't, what's weird and odd is some of their little behaviors, but there are things that do not make sense at all under the circumstances. And what that would be not caring about the phone call coming in, going out to get your mail and disappearing for an hour and then wanting to leave town. Those three things are so huge that that has to tell us something. Now, let me tell you, well, let me read you something from this. I found this in uh, the Who Killed Jean Bonnet Ramsey book by Sarah Wecht. Wecht, Wecht. Anyway, there are two things in here that really struck me. Okay. They are, I thought those are really weird. Okay. John revealed his grand strategy. Well, it's not just an attorney. We're also assembling an investigative team to assist. I want the best minds in this country that this country has to offer to help us resolve this. And another point he says, again, Wait, wait, where's the other one? Oh, oh, no, no, said John. We're ready now to get this resolved. It's got to be resolved for us to get on with our lives, to continue with the grieving process. Resolved. Who wants a case to be resolved? I know every parent of a missing or murdered child wants the case to be. Anybody want to say the right word? Right word? They want the case to be I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Where are you guys? Come on. Want the case to be. Oh, come on. <laughs> if you don't, if you do. Case to be. I'm going to write it here in case nobody comes up with them three seconds flat. There we go. Thank you, Carrie. Solved. That is the correct word. Solved, not resolved solved. And that is extremely important. When you want something resolved, you want things to calm down, to, 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 to lessen so that you can move on with life. Like John says, they want to go on, they want to grieve. They want to get on with life. They want to get this over, with, get this over with. You want to resolve something. But when you have a mystery and involves the murder of your child. You don't want it resolved. You want it solved. You want the killer caught. And none of this is, is what, the, what he's saying. And there's also one other comment I want to make uh, from this. <laughs> and he said, would they be, uh, he was asked if he would be willing to sit down with the Boulder police. Absolutely, John said. We want them to know everything possible. Hmm, possible. Not everything, but everything possible. So that's another curious word uh, that stands out to me as, as, as being extremely odd. Um, so I'm having trouble with the behavior of the family of John and Patsy Ramsey. I'm having trouble with that behavior. It is not normal for, for parents of missing or murdered children. Not normal. Now, so there always can be the fact that maybe they're weirdos. You know, they, act, they do things in a weirdo way. But there's so many of these things that just don't make sense that this is why eventually somebody said, I'm having trouble with a stranger getting into their house or even a friend doing this because this isn't making sense to me. Their behavior does not make sense to me. It seems like 
they know there was never a kidnapping, that they know no one ever had their child. That's why they weren't paranoid about the 10 o'clock hour. They weren't worried about leaving town. And, and they just want it resolved and not solved. So these, to me, are the biggest things you can possibly come up with. Now, okay, so now we're coming down to the family. And this, this is, comes to be the most tricky part of this whole issue is who, if it was, if it was somebody in the family, if it was, who was it? Who was it in this family? And of course there, there have been, oh, I'm right in front of John. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move over a spec. Now I'm in front of Patsy. Okay, I'm gonna move over here. I'm gonna move over here for a minute. All right, all right. I'll sit a little bit in front of Jean Bonnet because she's not here anymore. It wasn't her. Uh, so now we have the three of them. We've got John, Pat, Patsy, and um, I'm going to sit here, Burke, uh, as possible suspects. Now, I'm going to eliminate the one. I absolutely, 100%, do not believe it is. Does anybody have an idea which one I think it absolutely was not? Anybody got a clue? Who do you think I absolutely think it was not? While we're waiting for that, uh, Lisa says, when a kidnapper take the child away from the house, if they're going to abuse her, yeah, they'd rather take her someplace else, but uh, theoretically, if, they, if the house was so freaking big, they could have time to kill her in the house. I'm just saying it could happen. Not likely. <laughs> okay, I'm seeing all kinds of, they, people say, you don't think it's Burke, you don't think it's John, you don't think it's Burke, you don't think it's the father. Oh, interesting. I think it absolutely could not be the Burke or... Uh, you think I wouldn't think it would be Burke. You wouldn't think it would, and that is, this is a correct answer, Patsy, for me. And again, I am not saying I'm right about this. I, I'm just going to bring evidence to you and tell you as a profile how I see evidence playing out. Uh, motive, behaviors. Patsy is the last person I think would kill her daughter, either on purpose or by accident. And I'll tell you why. Um, okay, here, here's why. Now, first of all, Jean ben Patsy lived vicariously through Jean Bonnet. You know, Patsy was a beauty queen. She loved the beauty queen circuit. I mean, she loved seeing her daughter dressed up and being praised and clapped and whatever. Um, absolutely. She loved having Jean Bonnet in her life. There's just no way that she would not want Jean Bonnet in her life. Uh, so there's there's no reason she'd kill her for any particular reason. It just makes no sense whatsoever. So then you get the accident theory, uh, that the, the theory that Jean Bonnet peed in her bed and therefore Patsy lost her mind and, and beat her to death. Um, I'm sorry. Jean Bonnet is only six. Anybody who's had a kid, even when they're not bedwetters, they bedwet sometimes, occasionally it happens. And you don't usually beat your kid to death. You also don't beat your kid to death who is the apple of your eye. Why would you do that to the apple of your eye? I mean, it's not that freaking big a deal. It can be dealt with. Uh, most people, I don't see anybody beating any child to death just because they peed in bed. Uh, now, the other reason I, I think she wouldn't do this. Now, uh, Patsy was struggling with cancer. She knows how the body can betray you, how you can, you know, she's struggling with all of this. I mean, even though it can make her, I mean, sometimes you take, you know, if you're, you're taking chemo and stuff, it can make you crazy. This is true, but that's just too much. Oh, and um, uh, was, she, was she jealous of her daughter? No, she was living through her daughter. I mean, what happens sometimes when a child gets to teenage years? Then they become a competitor, perhaps, because now you're losing your beauty. And this thing is what you used to be when you were that age. I, I, I you know, I could have seen that possibility, but I'm going to go with Julie on this. Patsy doted on Jean Bonnet. Absolutely. I, I absolutely see. It doesn't make a bit of sense to me that she would do this. And and uh, also, here's some point that a lot of people may not uh, get. John. John, I have to say, is a quite cold-blooded fellow. That's at least the way I see him. Um, he reacts to things in a very cold manner. Um, and Patsy, being under the influence of, you know, going through chemo and, and, and ill and all that stuff, if she had hit, if she had hit um, Jean Bonnet over the head, I think that John would have just 
No, for they were, first of all, they would have called 911. If all that happened was she hit her on the head, she, they, they would have called 911. Now, I had two things that could have happened at that point. They could have, um, uh, hold on a second. Uh, they could have a not knowing she was dead, you know, because if you hit some her over the head and she's not dead yet, wouldn't you want to call 911 and save your child's life, especially one you doted on? So that makes no sense. Secondly, if she actually was getting to that point, I think John would find it easy to say, well, you know, you know, if she goes off to the, they, they put her in a mental institution, you know, you know, I'm the grieving husband again and, and the grieving father and I get lots and people feel sorry for me and, you know, it works out pretty well for me. Uh, so I can't believe that he would have covered up just for, just for her. I don't believe he covered up just for Patsy. I don't think he would have done that. So I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not in the line with that one. So now we have another interesting issue in this case, which is, I think the thing that throws most of this off. Um, so there, there's, there's two issues in the case. One is the strangulation with, with, with what they call the gar garrote. And the other one is him, somebody hitting her over the head with either they think a flash, a heavy flashlight could be a baseball bat, could be something. But some people say, oh, well, you know, if uh, this, um, this, this is this, this is a theory, Roberta. B Burke was eating pineapple. And since, uh, since she had pineapple in her stomach, what the theory is by some people is that Burke came, uh, somehow she was put to bed, Burke was eating his food and Jean Bonnet came down and said, I like some of that. Or she just grabbed it out of his bowl, maybe used his spoon and he got pissed off, picked up a flashlight and nailed her with it. Again, if that's true, what's the rest of it? Again, why wouldn't the parents call 911? Uh, why would he shout, I don't know what I call 911. No, I hit, well, something's wrong with sister. Uh, call 911. Uh, if they heard a commotion, they come down. Oh my God, what have you done? You hit your sister. You know, it's a child. I mean, things aren't going to be good in your family. Things are going to be lousy, but at least, you know, you could get 911, try to save your daughter's life. You know, and if it was your nine-year-old child, he's not going to go to prison the rest of his life. He's going to get some help of some sort. So again, just for him going nuts and hitting her makes no sense. So we have an issue about the garrote, which is the part that really throws everything really crazy. Because the garrote, some people have theorized that after they found, after she was hit over the head with the, with the heavy object, the garrote was used for staging. Well, the garrote, something did strangle her. You know, um, I'm not saying they necessarily use the garrote like this, but she was still strangled in one way or the fashion or the other. So, you know, you you find your, if your child is still breathing when you hit when she was hit over the head, I just don't think you strangled her to death for staging purposes or think she's dead, but didn't realize it. So you just decided to stage it with this thing. It really doesn't make sense. So in my opinion, the garrot had to come before her getting hit over the head. Somebody was, or or if it came came with hitting over the head, it came right, right together. Hit over the head, this, or strangle and then hit over the head. But it came very close together. Uh, so I don't think one was used to stage the other. I mean, that makes no sense to me. Um, so then we come down to the two possibilities if it were with inside, inside the family. We would come down to John being involved, which would be a sexual homicide. A sex, in other words, he would be sexually abusing his daughter by using a, using a, a garrot technique to bring her in and out of consciousness and some kind of exciting thing for him. Or it would come down to... Okay, go this way, my finger. It will come down to Burke attacking her. Now, um, there's a bunch of issues in both of those, which is why this is such a, a tricky little, little, little wicket to, 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 that we're in. Because that comes down to that. And then why is Pat, why would, was Patsy involved in some way? Did she know what happened? Um, and that, Oh, and this is a good point, by the way. Patsy would do anything to protect her surviving child, in my honest opinion. You know, there's a thing called, um, I call it Cain and Abel. Um, Cain and Abel issue is this. 
Cain kills Abel in the Bible because Cain is jealous of Abel. And then Cain survives this whole ordeal. He somehow is, he doesn't get, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't get, you know, get executed. He gets to go off and live his life uh, in a different place. He gets punished, but he doesn't, he doesn't get executed. Uh, there are a number of cases um, and I dealt with one of the worst cases ever once uh, where a young man, he was probably 10, I believe, somewhere around 10 years old, family came to me because they said that the um, the police were claiming that their teenage son killed their 10-year-old boy. And that boy was stabbed to death like a huge amount of times and it was, it was like blood everywhere all over the kitchen floor. It was just a mess. And he said, the teenager said he was upstairs listening to music and somebody must have gotten into the house and killed him. Well, there was like a boatload of evidence that proved that not that was not true. And the defense attorney tried to come up with some scenario that she could have driven a Mack truck through. It was so stupid. And I had to tell the parents, no, uh, prosecution's right on this. Your teenage son did kill your 10-year-old. They fought for him and fought for him and fought for him because, and Abel, and their Abel was a wonderful kid. I mean, from he was, he was the spirit. He was the kid in the family who was the golden boy. He played sports. He was very attractive. The, the teenager was more withdrawn, wasn't as good looking, and he was not the golden boy. And I, he was very jealous of his parents, I mean, the parents' attention toward his younger brother. And when he got rid of his younger brother, he got exactly what he wanted. Guess what he got? He got his parents 100% attention. Even if he was in prison, he got their 100% attention. He won. So the Cain and Abel theory is not a bad one that Burke could have been very jealous of Jean Bonnet. He had some behaviors toward her that were a little bit weird. Um, and, you know, it's people, and he was nine years old, so he seemed very young. But actually, I just want to point out something. He was almost 10. He was turning 10 in January. So he was almost 10 years old. And he was a very smart boy. Um, and strong enough to commit enough of that crime that he could have done it. Um, and then, then we have John. Uh, was John was John a you know one of those fathers who you know I saw as he could, didn't wasn't having maybe enough uh, personal time with his wife because she's going through cancer treatment. You know, I mean, she, she was, probably wasn't in the mood, shall we say? So, was John without? Um, did he see his younger daughter since she was always dressed up in all these pretty things as, as sexual? Um, did he then, you know, spend some time with her? Is that possible? Yes, it is. Uh, then, but you know, you have to go then from what is a kind of a normal, like that's a terrible word to use, normal, a normal sex abuse of a child in a family to severely abnormal. Um, in other words, She's six. He could do a lot of stuff to her that doesn't involve strangling her. A lot of stuff. Um, you know, all kinds of things that don't even leave marks. And uh, anybody who's been abused as a little child can tell you how that can work. Uh, so I find it a little unlikely that he would have, because this is what would have had to have happened. And here's, here's one scenario. I'm going to put different scenarios out. I'm not going to say any of them are the one that happened, but I'm going to suggest what could, you'd have to do, you have to be like this. So, you know, they come home and Burke gets some, some pineapple, goes to bed. Uh, then John says, geez, I got an itch. So, hey, hey, Jean Bonnet, I'll give you some. Hey, he left some of his pineapple down there. Why don't you come down and eat some of it? And so she comes downstairs and he says, hey, I got something for you in the cellar that's even better than pineapple. And he, she goes down there and He's got this garage and he's got, you know, he decides he's going to play around with her in the cellar, which is extraordinarily uncomfortable, mind you. Um, and because it's like cement, I have, I actually have a picture of that here. Where's my, where's the cellar here? Cellar, cellar, cellar. Did that picture disappear too on me? Oh, there it is. Okay. Well, it's supposedly cement. So not exactly a fun place to play around. Let me tell you. Not exactly what I would choose. Now, one could say, well, no, he was maybe he was up in the bedroom, um, messing around with her in the bedroom and garroted her in the bedroom. And again, it's not really, the garrot wasn't really used as a garrot. It was more used as a whatever. And her hair is in it, so you know, somehow it was put around her when, and she was moving around a little bit. So he could have done that in the bedroom. And then when he realized he'd like choked her too much, then he got panicked and took her down to the cellar and 
I don't know, at that point he hits her over the head and then runs upstairs and tells Patsy to write a note. <laughs> I mean, that's a little weird. Um, not saying that makes a whole lot of sense. No, another theory could be that while he was doing this, Patsy came in the room. Oh, this, this is this is this. I'm going to put this up just so you can sort of see this 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 theory. Uh, as you could say, could have happened. So here's another version of. Okay, I'm going to go back to this for now. Um, okay, so now let's assume he did something to her. He t or let's say he took her to the cellar and was messing around with her down in the cellar, or I guess wherever he could have been messing with her. Let's say he's messing with her in the bedroom. And Patsy hears something and she goes into the bedroom and she sees John doing this to her beloved daughter. And she picks, she has a, like, if she went down the cellar, she might have a flashlight to look for what the hell's going on in the cellar because it's dark down there, maybe whatever. And then she's, oh my God, what are you doing? And she goes to hit John over the head and she misses and nails Jean Bonnet. Then they're both involved. You know, John did one bad thing, she did another bad thing. Then they're involved in it together. Is it possible? possible i'm having trouble with it as a theory i mean I, actually it's one of my earlier theories i just thought you know i just is that what happened because i know i know there's some odd thing about john's behavior that is very concerning his very much his coldness and a person who's got that kind of cold behavior you kind of wonder uh what 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 could have been done um that yeah it, it's uh it's, I just want to mention this. I heard the DNA didn't match any of the Ramses. That DNA is crap, just to tell you. It's crap. It's 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 a weird, it was a touch DNA. God knows, you know, where it came from. It's so, it was so minor. It's so mixed. It's just, it's one of those things that's really just a red herring. Uh, as a matter of fact, they didn't have any touch DNA from anybody else, which is weird because, I mean, if they're dressing the child, they're pulling, you know, her clothes on, there should be touch DNA all over that. But I, it's just, it's, it doesn't make sense. Uh, it, it really doesn't. Um, and you know, there's no other, no other evidence except that. That's that's kind of strange. Um, but uh, now, now we're. I, and here's a point. Patsy would do anything to protect her surviving child. Yeah, um, that's very possible because again, we're talking Cain and Abel as a possibility that you know you've lost the one child that was. And maybe you even feel guilty. You know, if you've been. If that's been your golden child and you've been all, you know, spending so much time with her doing all this stuff and you felt you left your son out, you could feel terribly guilty and think, well, I understand why he went nuts. Uh, do you suspect Mr. Brands of being abusive, not physically, though, just a control freak? I see the control thing going there. Um, yes, I, I there is. A, he does seem to like that aspect of things. And who knows? There may be. I'll bring up another issue about that in the in the in the. Um, and the, the the ransom note, which is where I'm going to hope all of you can help me out because, you know, I need one real help with the ransom note. And I'll explain that to you. That's the clue I'm talking about in the beginning. Um, yeah, Roberta says he reminds me of McCann. He, he does a wee bit, doesn't he now, he do, uh, of uh, Jerry McCann. Um, it's an odd way she seemed garroted. Yeah, garroted, garroted, not garroted. <laughs> I think that's something in a building. Oh, um, a garret, uh, a gar garroted. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, there's a possibility that that wasn't actually what happened. It may be that she had a, around her in a certain way and whoever found her then re removed it to try, try to save her and realized she wasn't savable. And then maybe somebody said, you better put that back just because that looks like you took it off. Just put it back and pretend you never touched it. That makes sense to me because if you, if you found a child in that condition with the rope around her neck, your instinct would be to remove it. But if then you found out it was not an outsider and you want to pretend that, the ch you, know, that you never found the child, and you want to stage something of some sort, you would put it back. And so what, the way it was may not have been the way it originally was. Um, so that that's that's uh, an issue. Um, Trixie says, Patsy was really suffering from the loss, but the phone call and the handwriting of the note makes me suspicious of what she knew. Yes, just, you know, you can be grieving. It doesn't mean that you don't know what happened, but you still grieve the loss of your child. Again, we saw this in the McCann case. I mean, I do believe that the McCanns were grieving. I just don't believe... I believe they know what happened to her. I, that, that's most likely from the evidence. Uh, from what I'm seeing here, I don't see a stranger getting into their house. It appears that there are many red flags that would say Patsy and John know more than they're saying. Those are the red flags. Um, so, but it doesn't mean they're not grieving. They well can be grieving, but they might be 
they can still cover things up. So um, I want to point, so I'm going to get to this. This is interesting. Garot is taught in Boy Scouts, although it's not taught as a means of murder. It's not even really a garot. It's really just a way you just wrap around a stick. You know, if you wrap that around a stick, you can do things like fly a plane over your head. You can use it for kites. You know, there's all kinds of reasons you could do that, not necessarily strangling people. Um, and she wasn't strangled like a garot. So, I mean, it's not like you're doing a thing. So, you know, um, and, oh, and this is a good point. This is true. Uh, Cyril Wack, Dr. Wack said the cause of death was strangling because there was only one teaspoon of blood in the skull injury. Now, yeah, and that's interesting. Um, he, I read that in his in his book, which is which is very well. Now we're seeing part of my house was taken. No, wait, wait, girl, come back, screen. Wait a minute, hold on. I just moved. The... <laughs> that's my house. Okay, what happened to everything here? Oh, that's weird. See, this is what happens to your green screen when you, when you hit things. Okay, I'm going to move over now. I'm going to go here. Okay. Yeah, that's that's my green screen behind me. Love a green screen, except when you hit it with a book. So anyway, now it's in a really strange spot. So anyway, this particular book um, I think was really good. Uh, and let me point out something about a forensic pathologist uh, and the determinations that they make sometimes. I did not see everything. I've seen versions and viewpoints on this. So I'm going to say I'm not absolutely sure. I'm not absolutely sure um, uh, how exactly she died, what came first, what came second. But I tend to think he might be right. Um, and that that if the strangling came first, then maybe it, when it was finished, some, some, whoever did that then picked up something and just hit the person, hit the child. I mean, and that's what sort of ended her life right there. Maybe he finished strangling her and it wasn't getting rid of her, so he... Not like that. Um, and it's very, but it's very hard to, to determine that. Now I want to go to the ransom note because this is a huge issue. Um, of course, the, because it was such a freaky ransom note. And this is where I want everybody's help. All right. Now the ransom note, three pages long. Yes, that is weird. Okay. Let's take a look at some of this. Now, oh, now I've, what's going on here? Oh, that's weird. Okay. Hold on. I'm having strange things happen. Uh, uh, here we go. Okay, and I'm gonna move over since I since I messed up my green screen. Now I gotta I gotta reposition everything. What the heck, I'm gonna look. Okay, I'm gonna move over here. Oh. All right. Now, there's a bunch of interesting things I think in this note, which I thought was really fascinating. One is okay. The note starts by saying Mr. Ramsey. Now, it could have said Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey but it didn't. It said Mr. Ramsey. And one of the things I noted through the whole note is that everything was focused on John Ramsey. Patsy just, Patsy didn't fa factor in at all in this note. Um, and, and it was weird to me because it almost seemed like Mr. Ramsey is becoming the victim in this whole thing. Look, Mr. Ramsey, we, 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 we respect your business, but not the the, com the country you work for. And if you don't do this, we'll get you. And if you don't do this, we're going to get you. Mr. Ramsey, don't grow a brain. Mr. Ramsey, this, John, this, John, that. Why only him? Is it because somebody really knows him? Or is it because he wants to be the victim? And that's an interesting point. So why, why is he not making Patsy part of the victim? Why is she not a victim in this? And that's one of the reasons I've wondered for a while whether, you know, he might have more to do with this than you know, he might actually be more culpable in this because he wants to be the victim so badly. Um, uh, but then again, there's another possibility because we're, we're assuming uh, that Patsy wrote this note. And that's what everybody seems to think. Um, I First of all, I think the first part's really kind of interesting. Mr. Ramsey, listen carefully. Usually when you're writing a note, you say, you don't say listen when you're not talking to somebody. Usually when you're dictating, you say, and you look up and go, okay, Mr. Ramsey, listen carefully. So that's kind of interesting. Um, why is listen in there? I think that's odd. Uh, so that 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 bugs me. Um, and, and let me point out something else I think is really weird in this thing. Uh, okay. Now, and and uh, the next part, the next part of the note is it this part of the note? Yeah. Okay. It says that guys are he's gentlemen are watching a daughter. Why the gentlemen? I don't know because they're they're theoretical killers. But then he goes on about. I mean, let me move over here a second. Eh, uh, if you don't do something right, okay. The look at the look at the top part here. Um, 
Oh, a second. Okay. It says, if you don't do what you, if you don't do what you want, there'll be an immediate execution of your daughter. You'll also be deprived of her remains for a pro proper burial. You know, if you just killed your child or if Patsy just found her child dead, that's a creepy thing to write. Don't you think? I mean, you know, you just found a dead child and your mind is emblazoned the poor dead child, your child that you love. And you're able to talk about her remains for a burial. And then you can talk about her being executed. And then when it gets down here and being beheaded, see the beheaded thing down there. And then it says, if you, if you do this, she dies. If you do that, she dies. If you do this, she dies over and over. It says she dies, she dies, she dies. Now, I, I have a really hard time thinking Patsy created this note. Think about this. Because I know the writing was maybe Patsy's, some stuff seemed Patsy-ish. But can you imagine a mother who's just lost her beloved daughter writing the words execution and beheaded and dies and dies and dies and dies? I have trouble with that. I just think that would be, she would have to have blood just cold blood running through her body to be able that. I find that really strange. Um, so that that has always bugged me as being a really weird thing. Uh, let me look at the last and then the end end of this this note. Um, then don't try to grow a brain, John. You know you're not the only fat cat. I mean almost seems vindictive. So that's, that's what it sounds like. And so part of, some people say, Oh, it may, you know, maybe, maybe it's Patsy and she's really pissed at John for whatever. And he's saying it's up to you now, John. But again, John's the victim, John's the victim, John's the victim. Yet the wording in the whole thing is about killing and dying. And it just, it doesn't seem, they say it's a feminine writing. I don't find that feminine writing to talk about executions, beheading and dying. Um, I, I think that only as, somebody who's very, very cold, who can walk away from this now and just say, okay, I'm going to write it this way. Now, having said that, I personally think if, if Patsy had anything to do with this letter, let me point out one thing that is weird. I will point this out though. Uh, if, if you, oh, don't tell me this is going to show up on here. I'm going to be mad. Because uh, 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 uh. something happened with my thing when I, oh, there. Okay. Wait a minute. I think it is here. Okay. If you take a look, if you take a look up here, right there, see that A? See that A? That is not a normal A. A normal A is written like, like that. That's the normal A. This is the weird A. And in the, in the, in the, uh, the um, ransom letter, not ransom note, some of those A's were written that way. And this is a sample of Patsy's handwriting. She writes some of her A's that way, which is pretty weird. Uh, my opinion that's kind of strange so the question would be did she create this letter did john create this letter and then dictate it to her or and this is a possibility that that um burke actually created this letter the the, the note and and let me let me let me talk about why one of the really weird things about this whole case and i'm going to explain that to you right here and this is how I need help because <laughs> uh, it's very interesting. So, um, so let, let's go back to a Burke scenario because we did a John scenario. I don't, I can't see a Patsy scenario in any way, shape or form. Just can't come up with one. That makes any sense to me. A John scenario. Mm, okay. That he was maybe, a, maybe doing something to his daughter and he was, had some very weird sexual fantasies and Patsy walked in and tried to hit him with a flashlight and hit, and hit, um, and hit Jean Bonnet, and so they uh, both were part of that to some extent. So, so John says, "Okay, we're going to write. We, we can't get her out of the house, so we'll just make it look like a really weird thing happening. So we'll write this really weird note. So you, I'll dictate it to you. Write it. Okay, possible. Um, now we take a look at the Burke issue, and of course he's you know he sued the networks over anybody you know insinuating when he was guilty about something. But I think you know the way the networks do it, they're absolutely saying, "Oh, he did it," which is ridiculous because we don't know. We do not know who, who committed this crime. Uh, these are just, um, I'm just pointing out possibilities and, and def, definite other, other certain absolutes and certain things that are just, you know, you, some people would say conjecture. So we'll use that. Okay, so the one possibility is that 
Burke is almost 10. He is strong enough to harm his sister, yes. If uh, he was downstairs and she came and she wanted to have some of his pineapple and he was mad at her for whatever reasons, I just annoyed with her and said, hey, I got something to show you in the basement. And she goes down to take a flashlight. Hey, come on, let's go look. I go down the, ba the, the basement. You know, it is possible that he, he could have a hit her over the head, not necessarily in, the, in, the, in a lethal sense, but to knock her out to some extent, to knock her down. He could have grabbed something he'd been playing with before, some high rope thing and strangled her. He could have. And then he, when, when he, he's finished, he could have just taken that, that, that thing and hit her again. And then, you know, if we're, we're talking to the parents are in bed and he's, he's done something to his sister, you know, 10 year old boys have a lot of imagination and he could have come up with a crazy, crazy scenario ransom note because he doesn't say, doesn't, doesn't, he doesn't realize that a child dead in the basement and a ransom note don't really go together, but Hey, you know, um, they could uh what that the the things that are make you wonder that he, he wouldn't have done it is the exact amount that was asked for which you think hey how would he know that um that that would be weird um so but they're but they're they say it's hard to know whether uh, what could he have written a note and left it on the stairs where he knew his mother would find it in the morning and then they wouldn't discover her body for a long time and he'd say i don't know what happened either i, I don't know you know i last time i saw her she she had gone to bed you know um not, not realizing how this would all play out, um, or is it, and or is it that uh, you know they found out sooner, uh, and then concocted a, a together concocted some kind of some kind of note which incorporated a lot of stuff. Did John actually dictate the note? But here, here's here's one of the things I want you to look at. Um, uh, that pay This is what I wrote to John, and this is this is this was such so. Interesting. Um, is this not showing up here? Oh, are we doing this again? Oh man, I don't know why I'm having trouble with this today. Um, any rate, uh, I'm gonna try to read you the note because it doesn't seem like it's showing up properly. It should be, but it doesn't seem to be. Uh, so I want you to hear the whole note. Um, I wrote in 2000, 421, 2000, um, I wrote to John Ramsey. An email and I what I did in the email was I explained to him that what I found very fascinating about the, the note the ransom note was it sounded like a choose your own adventure story I don't know how many remember those but they're very popular with nine ten year old boys extremely popular at the time my kids had a whole my boys were, had a whole pile of them uh and let's see my boys yeah they were the same age they were the, they were about that age then they had a pile of to your own adventure stories. And that's why I had them in the house. And I actually took one of the, the, the ransom note things. And I looked at the, the font and the choose your own adventure stories I actually almost overlaid on it. I'm like, did they trace some of this stuff to try to disguise handwriting? What, what could have happened here? But the stories, if you look at the way the stories is there, to your own adventure stories are really goofy. They have silly scenarios like this, which are overdone and have very strange kind of childish language in them. Um, and so I wrote him, I said, you know, it's interesting to me. At first I wrote him and said, you know, I'm concerned about the police not handling the case. Well, I, you know, I buttered him up a little bit. And then I said, you know, I did notice something as a criminal profiler. Thought you'd be very interested in knowing that the ransom note sounds like a choose your own adventure story, which is very popular with boys. And that this has the same type of scenarios in it. And I wonder that the kid, the kidnapper did not use the scenarios from these uh, choose your own adventure stories to write the, the, the note, the content of the note. And he wrote back. Dear Pat, thank you for this for your letter. You know firsthand the frustrations we are dealing with. Our police system in this country is largely broken and ineffective. There are exceptions, but for the most part, we have a serious and dangerous problem in this country relating to how police operate. I will keep your letter as some of the things you are doing we want to do as well. We are going to speak long and loud about the murder of a child that, that the murder of a child should be a federal offense. So responsibility for the investigation can be taken out of the hands of the local police, who in our case, not only bungled the case, but became the biggest obstacles to pursuing the killer, John Ramsey. What does anybody notice is missing out of that email back to me? What do you notice that is missing? <laughs> Ray, Ray Ross says this. It says it was like war and peace of ransom notes. Very long, yes. But if you read the choose your own adventure stories, you'll find there's so much similarity in the way they sound. It's 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 crazy. Um, oh, that's an interesting point. Huh. 
I could see John showing that bonus check to Burke and telling him why it was important to do well in school. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Uh, this is an interesting point. Uh, I could see John showing, oh no, I'm sorry, this one. Uh, the ransom note was in perfect condition. No tears, smudges, wrinkles. Whoever wrote it would have to have a lot of composure, especially if they just killed somebody. Yeah, uh, composure or lack of lack of emotion, because if you have a lack of emotion, uh, then you can that can be very very you know it's not that hard to do. If you have no there, ah, uh, yes. Thank you very much. Not taking action with your letter, just saying he'll hang on to the note. I thought that was really weird because here's what, again, a normal parent would do, even if they think I'm full of shit, mind you, because I mean, not every parent, if I contact somebody, they don't all think I'm a brilliant profile. They may go, well, thank you for your, that, that seems a little weird to me or, you know, but normally what they would say is this, really? That's not what you think. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to talk to the police about it. Um, we had, we had some choose your own adventure books in the house, or we've never had a choose your own adventure book in our house. I think, but yeah, this is a really nothing about, my actual clue, the clue he wasn't interested in. He was only interested in saying he wanted the police to do a, to do, to be a, no, the police forces are failing. He wasn't interested in the clue, which I thought was very strange. Um, oh, somebody pointed out here that uh, Burke did an interview with Dr. Phil and smiled throughout. Was it a nervous smile or a duping delight? Uh, I have to say, you know, I looked at the interviews he did and originally the one where he looked at the pineapple and didn't identify it when he was you know, when he was probably 10 years old when he did that one. I looked at another one when he was a little bit older and looked at another one. Um, I have to say, you, it, it is a little, his behavior is definitely odd. Um, there's no question about it. He is, as, as a child goes, his behavior for losing his, his sister was odd. Um, I don't, you know, some people say he might, might be autistic or, you know, um, uh, maybe, maybe he is slightly. Um, and maybe that does affect things. So a lot of it would be how he behaved prior, how he behaved afterwards. Um, but there was definitely a lack of emotion, which was definitely true. There was definitely a lack of emotion toward the, the loss of his sister, which I thought was rather strange. Um, that, uh, you know, you know, so he, even if you lose a pet, you'd have a little bit more emotion than that. And yet he lost his little sister, the only child living in the house with him, um, at a Christmas time. And he was kind of nonchalant about it. So that was weird. Um, it's definitely weird. So <sighs> the problem with this whole case is that it was bungled from the beginning. Um, and I'll agree with John on that one. It was bungled. Um, the crime scene was not preserved, um, but there, I, I can come up with, there, there truly was no evidence of uh, anybody cutting into the house or leaving the house. Uh, it's very unlikely that they would have, you know, it's very strange that they would have you know, chosen to take her out of her bed and bring her down to the basement and then attack her there. Uh, you know, the whole, the whole thing is very strange for a stranger kidnapping or for, <laughs> or the theoretical, you know, because kidnapping for ransom, which we all know it was not. Um, and it would be extremely odd for anybody to want to a sexual predator to stop and write a three, a three page note. It just makes no sense. And for him to know these things, I say, if it's a stranger, he wouldn't have known these things. If it was a friend who just was out to get him a little bit more possibility, because he would know something and maybe just want to play with them. Uh, but it's just, it just, it, it does. If it wasn't for the, the, the behaviors, these constant be weird behaviors, especially as I point out, not paying attention when the phone call came or didn't come at 10 o'clock, going out for mail, leaving for a whole hour, even though the phone call could come in. I mean, just because it didn't come in at 10 doesn't mean it's not going to come in at 10, 30 or 11, because maybe the guy, for some reason, couldn't make the phone call. You know, you'd be waiting all day long. You'd be waiting into the morning hours, still waiting for that phone call. And he was, John Ramsey was already not caring about the phone call and already making plans to leave town. Once he found the body, he was making plans to leave town. None of that is normal. Absolutely not normal. The, 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 the ransom note is not normal. And it does have very, very great similarities to a Choose Your Own Adventure book. This is why I want to see if you could help me out. So this, I have never, 
Now, I don't know how much time I spent on this. This was, this was, you know, many, many, many years ago that I even dealt with this. But I am curious because I've, I've have a few different to choose your own adventure stories, and I see inklings of them in this. Um, and one of the things that's very true is that a lot of times when people do, uh, do something when they write a note or whatever they're doing, they'll take something from a movie or from a book, something they know. It's very hard to completely imagine something you don't, you're not experiencing. It's just, it's very hard. It's hard to come up with names. A lot of times people need a name. They, they, they come up with a relative's name. Or if they're near a building, they might look up and say, oh, it's the Smith the, the you know, Smith building. So they go, oh, well, Mr. Smith did it. They, they, you, it's very hard under stress to come up with clever stuff that's completely new. Um, unless maybe you're 10 years old, which in case maybe you are better at creating fiction, which is interesting again. Uh, but this still comes with some place. And I believe that these two Joan adventure stories are very much related to this note. I, I'm wondering if out there, there is a choose your own adventure story, which mir mirrors this note uh, or comes very close to it. I haven't, I, I only had a few of them. Uh, there's a lot new, uh, newer choose your own adventure stories out there. And they're, they're, they're meaningless if they're after the day she was murdered. Uh, you know, anything after Jean Bonnet's death date is not going to be, you know, those, those newer books aren't going to mean anything. But any book that came before that and up to that date that a child might have sitting in his little bedroom that might be the book. And so if anybody has choose your own adventure stories and wants to do some investigations to find the choose your own adventure stories and find one that mirrors some good portion of this. Now I have found aspects of each one of these books in the few I have, I've found the feeling of this entire scenario in these books. There's, I really feel that strongly. I just haven't found exact words. And I'm curious if there are exact words where somebody might look and say, oh, that's a good sentence to make. Came up with some ideas from it. It doesn't mean the whole note is from a book, obviously not but that there might be pieces of it. And if there was any piece of this note, which comes directly from the book, or a whole phrase or a whole sentence, wouldn't that be interesting? So if anybody out there wants to do a little research and find if there is a choose your end adventure story from that period of time that more matches this note than the one I've been able to find, I'd be very interested in getting that piece of information. So, because it just, it just strikes me too strongly it comes from somewhere, and I do believe Choose Your Own Adventure stories are it. Oh, Desiree, yeah. They were pop I love Choose Your Own Adventure books when I was a kid. Absolutely, they're, they were super, super popular. Um, and they had a lot of creepy stories in them. You know, that one I, I showed uh, here was Kidnapped. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of weird, weird ones. And they're all, you're always in danger in these stories, right? You're always in danger. So, you know, it's always like, and he's about to, you know, he's about to shoot me. And what are you going to do? Or he, you've been grabbed by these, whatever, the aliens, and they've taken you to a boat. What are you going to do, A or B? And so, so there's, a, there's enough in these things which really, you know, makes me really, truly believe that whoever wrote this note knows Choose Your Own Adventure Stories. And I don't believe it's from the mind of Patsy Ramsey. Now that she might have copied a note to make it different, she might have done that. Uh, she might have contributed to it. She might have been dictated. But I just, I don't see, I don't see the, the especially the middle part of this note, dies, 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 beheaded, refused. It's almost like, almost, almost a threat. Oh, and the other thing is, is, is it, is, since it's aimed at John so much, either John is trying to play a victim or somebody is angry with John. Who knows? Um, but I don't, again, I don't think it's a stranger. I can't, I can't come up with that. Uh, somebody said that half, the half brother, he, yeah, he was a suspect, but he wasn't anywhere near the area. So he simply couldn't have done it. So that sort of does it. Yeah. Um, here's a comment. I, I, Angela says, I think Burke smiles even when nervous. You have no idea how to behave in front of a camera, especially on mainstream television. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will guarantee you that is true, Angela. And that's very reasonable because people, people, you know, being on national TV, People do not realize what it's like. Um, although I will say something very interesting to you about that. I spent a lot of time in green rooms with families of murder victims. <laughs> Weirdest thing ever. Even if your child has been murdered, it's amazing. It's People love being on TV. I mean, I swear to God, it's like they've won the lottery to be on national television. You know, one of these one of these talk shows. Um, God help you if you're on Dr. Phil. I have, no, I have no affinity for that guy at all. I did one show with him and never will go back. 
one person I do not think is should be on TV. But anyway, um, so at any rate, but I was in the green room with some of these family members. And the first thing that happens when you're in the green room is everybody treats you like a celebrity. And then they take you in and get your hair and makeup done. And, you know, a lot of people have never had that experience of having their hair and makeup done. And, you know, you come out looking pretty glamorous. I mean, I, I see people in the green room like, damn, you know, what the trailer park you come out of. And then they come out later after they get their hair and makeup done. I'm like, oh, you know, now, now you look really good. You know, so, I mean, anybody who's ever seen me on TV knows. I don't look like this on TV. <laughs> of course, a lot of you remember me from 10 to 15, 20 years ago when I looked a whole lot younger. But regardless, I don't have, I'm, I, I can't do hair and makeup for shit. That's why I'm doing a ponytail every time because I can't do hair. And I, I'm pretty shabby with makeup too. So I'm, I'm not made up for national television. But I know that I have some really great, I mean, wow, I've had some really great stuff. My favorite is from the Today Show. I have, I'm the, that's the hottest I've ever looked was on that show because, man, do they do good work. And um, so, you know, so, yeah, so people get real excited before they go on TV. They're in the, ah. But, you know, the weirdest thing happens when they get on, they're sitting on the, now, now they're looking all glamorous. They sit down with the host of the show, like Montel Williams. I've done Montel a number of times. And then Montel would say, for example, he goes, so, you know, so glad to have you here. And they go, oh, thank you, Montel, for having me. And they go, so we want to talk about what happened to your daughter. Yeah, okay. And then they go, what? Well, tell me about the night this happened. Well, <laughs> then they fall apart. They look beautiful, but they fall apart because the, the emotions are still there. And talking about something that has truly torn up your life and has destroyed your life and taken away your loved one, talking about that is very difficult. I don't care how many people are in the damn audience. I don't care if you have a camera on you. You'll, you'll hear the break in people's voices when they try to talk about that stuff. You'll, you'll, hear, you'll hear the sounds of true emotion. So, yes, being in front of a camera, you never know how you're going to behave. But when you're talking about something highly emotional and you're not, your responses are really, really off, maybe there's a reason for that. Not saying that is true, but maybe there is a reason for that. So, as they see, uh, yeah, I tried that. Um, can you Google to check out those phrases are part of? I tried that, Christine. But the problem is, none of most of these books they've never been put into into the Google you know form. There are there's a thing called Google Books, and I have put things into Google Books, and they have popped up. So you put in a phrase, and you come up with something. But those are usually educational books or very well known books. They're not going to put children's books up there. So uh, I have had zero success with that, which is why I'm. I'm, I'm hoping. Uh, now, there's some of this, the entire ransom note is movie lines. I, I don't think the entire ransom note is. I think there might be one here and one there. But I think the tone and the whole style is choose your own adventure um, because it has a very childish, if you know, it's not just that, you know, no, we have, you know, some something in there like uh, you're not the only fat cat in town. That may come from a movie. But the whole style of the note is childish. It is something you would, you would see in an 11-year-old book, a 10-year-old's book. It's not something you see in an adult book. And so that's why I find it it's very fascinating. Um, Roberta said, I've never heard of them. Oh, there are tons of them. They're super popular. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> Angela, I wrote a lot of stories as a child and my imagination was crazy. When I view them now, I should be locked up. <laughs> and don't worry, I've turned out fine. Well, I'm, 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 glad, I'm, I'm glad of that, Angela. I'm glad you turned out well. But yes, I mean, children can write some very imaginative weird stuff, but they also sometimes borrow from other, other stories they already heard. Again, if you're really into two show and adventure stories and then you go to write something, you might write something similar, uh, uh, which is kind of uh, interesting. Um, what says the film Ransom? Yeah, I, I, I particularly know this one. Had been made, uh, Patsy saw this film. John made a point of saying he hadn't watched it because there are many lines from the movie. Yes, I heard of Ransom. It's with um, Mel Gibson. And actually, I tried to watch it last night. Um, and for some reason, it was unavailable at Amazon Prime. So I have to go searching for it. Uh, but yes, that is true. So I don't know whether we're talking about some kind of collaboration uh, or not. But it's just really... I say, I, I, the again... The, there are certain things in there that sound like they come from movies, but, and I, the Ransom movie is, it's just not the same as the, I say, the childishness of this note. 
Uh, would you spell the name of those books? Yeah, they're just called Choose Your Own Adventures. I'm going to put it down here. Choose Your Own Adventure. That's all they are. And then there's a, like a, there's like hordes of them. I mean, unfortunately, it's a lot of them. But um, whoops, there you go. Choose Your Own Adventure. I put that in there. Um, and that's without the capitals. Uh, but there is a whole bunch of them. And I tried to go for the ones that sounded more, I said kidnapped is one. Um, uh, and anything with the, with a, some kind of idea that you're uh, a kidnapping had taken place or some kind of abduction. Um, some, you know, but a good portion of them are like that anyway, because you're in danger in every one of the books. So, so that's why I don't know which one more could come from, but <laughs> Carol says, can you slow down a bit? Pat can't keep up. Yeah, yeah, that is me. I do talk very fast and I apologize for that. I, I will, I will try to take that into consideration. Um, so, whoops. Where did that one come from? Um, yeah, so uh, sorry. I will try to slow down in the future. I do. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Sounds like the note was written by someone who had a few drinks on them, Pat. That could be. I mean, in theory, I mean, some people had been to a party. Um, I don't know how much they drank. I don't know. That could have affected something. Uh, but still... There's a very, say, a very childish, early teen, you know, late elementary school version to this. And I will stand by that. And I hope that, uh, I keep hoping that we'll find some kind of, you know, some kind of, inter uh, some kind of something with that. Um, oh, yes, I have. Yeah. Uh, Patsy was a movie fan. She was also very dramatic. Thanks, Pat. It's good to know you've heard of the movie. Yeah, I have. But again, the problem I have with this note is, for, for Patsy writing the whole thing herself, what bothers me the most is can you really imagine you just found your beloved child strangled and hit over the head, you know, dead basically. And you're horrified and you have to, let's say it's your husband or your son or whatever you think it might be. And you have to, you're writing, gonna write a note to go to the present tense and say the words dies, dies dies and then you're not going to get her body back and you're she's going to be beheaded yeah i i, I i'm sorry I, I i can't imagine doing that unless you're either very cold-blooded and very matter of fact in other words it's happened we can't fix it and we're, go, we're just going to have to go with it which means to me more likely that john would have written it or that you are a child who can write a note without and doesn't have does not have empathy for the the sister um, that maybe he is harmed, <laughs> and if he if he lacks that feeling inside, then he could write that note and find it amusing. I mean, it's hard to to fathom that, but that could be, you know, it, it would actually, I say, somebody could find that amusing, uh, but that would that would entail psychopathy. Now, psychopathy, um, you'll see, you know, psychopathy shows a person is able to, you know. Um, Lack of empathy is big on psychopathy, ability to lie, um, uh, having very shallow emotions, very, very common with psychopaths. That is a trait of psychopathy. So is it possible that if you have very shallow emotions, you can write this note? Um, I don't see Patsy as having shallow emotions. I don't. Uh, I don't see that at all. I see some shallow emotion problem to some extent with John. Uh, but then again, I don't know if he's more taking care of things. Uh, certainly, we have seen a, a problem with shallow emotions with um, uh, with um, Burke, uh, but you know, to me, to write this kind of note, to find it, you know, either necessary or amusing. I would say necessary or amusing. Which one is it? Um, and you know, if if it's being written by Burke and he's you know, creating this and then he's going to put on the steps. So huh, my parents won't know, won't know it was me. They'll come down and see this note and think some crazy, some, some kidnappers got her. Is it possible? Yes. And then maybe there's another scenario that's possible that has to do with John Ramsey, but um, that uh, has to be proven. And none of that has been proven by the police. And I don't think ever will be proven. Uh, obviously Patsy has gone to her grave with knowing whatever she knows. Um, so, and, and you do wonder that if Patsy, if, if, if John had killed Jean Bonnet because he was a pervert of some sort, 
you would kind of think that she would might have ratted him out at the end uh, because that would free her son from any doubts. Um, so one would think she might have done that, um, and she didn't. Um, uh, so it, it's a good question as to, is this a Cain and Abel story? Uh, and will we ever find out? I don't know. So I just want to point out, Carol said, yes, her hand, the handwriting, there was some similarities. And again, that A that I showed you uh, was kind of unique in that, um, which is, which was interesting. Uh, so it, it's, it's, I say, we, 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 well, we, I don't know that we'll ever know. Uh, this is, you know, I haven't, let's say, looked at this in, in 20 years, but uh, I, I, I'm curious to see what, whether, if we would find out. Um, but I, I, I'm just asking all of you investigators out there, if you do have Choose Your Own Adventure stories and know where you can get some in your library, check them out. And uh, if you ever come up with something, it would be kind of, kind of interesting to find out if there's more to this than, uh, if there's any phrases um, sentences that match, you know, I guess it might be movie ones in there too, but I'm just wondering if there's, if, if we'd see a, a more of a big, a bigger scenario in, included in these notes, uh, that match one of the choose your adventure stories. It would be interesting to find out. That's the only, at the moment, um, oh, that's, that's a very good point. I just want, yeah, somebody actually wrote, somebody else said this too, Ian. I remember being a child and trying to write like my mom and dad. Um, Depending on, I, I wish we had uh, uh, more writing from Burke. That would be very nice to know if he had, um, if there were, if, and for some reason, I don't think they did proper statement analysis. They didn't do that with Burke, I don't think. And I don't know why. And again, that's a fa failure in the investigation, even if it's to exclude him. Don't forget, one of the most important things about any investigation is, is to not only to focus in on people, but to eliminate them. Because what if you can't if you can eliminate them, then you don't have to look there anymore. So if you know if there was no way Burke could have committed this crime, and there was ways to eliminate him, including handwriting analysis, that would be great. Um, so anything you don't do can damage the case because then you have that question forever as to what really happened. You know, and we don't know. Uh, as far as uh, Burke's ability to write like his mother. Uh, I, you know, again, I, I'm not I'm not sure what school he went to, what they were teaching him for. This is this is very important. Uh, right now, I'm homeschooling my granddaughter, so I'm teaching her handwriting, um, and I I do have issues about certain letters. By the way, you know, uh, I don't. I mean, I'm I'm I found a book I liked because I started. I got one book and I opened it up, and I, I'm like, I don't like this handwriting, you know. And then we worked with a different book, um, and I know when I taught my kids. I was also homeschooled all my three of my kids growing up and we used it. I, uh, I used two books and I have those two books today. Um, my granddaughter will probably go back to school in September, but if she continued on, I would teach her the other one, which is even prettier handwriting than the one I used, but I had specific things I wanted to see as to how certain letters were made as I don't like some of the other methods. So yes, I, I don't know how much Patsy was involved with, um, with, uh, with Burke. Uh, did she teach him to write? She might have taught him to write and not to school. Did she hover over him when he did his schoolwork and make sure that he wrote nicely? Um, did his well, did he write very similarly to his mother? Um, because she taught him to write that way. I don't know. And those are some of the fascinating things I think we could, uh, you know, we, we could learn more from. But uh, yeah. Oh, but <laughs> Kat, Kat says, yes. This is true. Looks like Pat's Kindle book and it's free now. Yes, I put it up. I put it up in the middle of the night, free for everybody today. So if you if you want to, uh, and, and this is the, uh, Claire put up the, the link. Um, yes, only the truth. It is a free book and it's, you know, an, just a nice book to read. So you're all here. So I put it up for free. So you won't have to spend $2.99. Yay. No. <laughs> it's a steal. Um, but um yeah, so they also, uh, here's a good point. Patsy used a lot of acronyms in her day-to-day -day writing. Yes, there were similarities, but again, we're talking about the child of that mother, the child of that father. Uh, we don't know, say, how much, you know, um, we just don't know. And it, it's frustrating because, and I'll, I've always said this as a, um, as a profiler, when I don't work on a case, I'm missing a lot of evidence. And even if we think we've gotten a lot of evidence because it's been, you know, a lot of it's been released to the public, 
we are still missing tremendous amounts of evidence. And I have worked cases where, you know, uh, I thought one thing when I was outside the case. And when I went inside the case and opened up the boxes and got out the papers, I got out the autopsy and the evidence reports and, and the interviews, which were always really useful. I go, oh my God, why didn't I know this? And if I'd known that, I would have thought this. So, you know, I, I realized that, you know, I'm not going to solve the Jean Bonnet case on the outside. I'm not, now, which is why, you know, I didn't label mine like some people do. Jean Bonnet case solved, you know. No, I'm not solving it. I'm discussing it. I'm discussing the evidence, discussing the theories, discussing what's odd, what's not odd, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. But, um, you know, uh, there's going to always be a lot of outstanding issues and, and that we're not going to be able to answer because, unless somebody confesses one day, uh, unless there's proof one day. Um, and I don't know that we're ever going to get that. Uh, so it might be one of those cases that forever goes unsolved. And people always believe that cases will never go forever unsolved, but that's not true. There's many, many, many unsolved cases. And, uh, and, it, and sometimes, you know, if I, if I, for example, were inside this investigation, I might say to, to you, yes, I have solved the case. Because I have solved many cases who've never that have never made it to court. Uh, I believe I solved them. Now that doesn't mean they're prosecutable, which I wrote in my book, The Profiler, uh, My Life Hunting Serial Killers and Psychopaths. Um, uh, I got a lot of people who hate me on that book because they say, well, weren't th those cases weren't prosecuted. Well, they weren't. That's correct. I was brought in too late. I believe I solved them, but there the evidence wasn't there to pursue a prosecution. Um, so you know, some, so there may be people on the inside of the Jean Bonnet case who know exactly what happened, but they can't, they can't prove it. So they're like, well, we've just lost that one, you know? Um, and then, you know, it's just, it's just the way life goes. Uh, uh, I, oh, <laughs> Lisa, Jack the Ripper case is still unsolved after 130 years. I'm going to be doing a show on Jack the Ripper. I actually did do a show on Jack the Ripper on mystery files. Um, and I did name the suspect I believe did it. Um, and, uh, I believe that evidence leads to this particular suspect and it was not the prince. It's not a, the artist. It's not, you know, somebody, it was, it was a local butcher. So anyway, but it wasn't, you know, it, it was funny. That's that, that show wasn't overly well received because, it, I did, it didn't have a famous person being the killers, you know, the serial killer. So it's like, eh, you know, um, but um, I will do that. I will do a whole show on that and I will explain more in more detail how I came to that conclu the conclusions. But again, is it unsolved or is it just not, was it just not prosecuted? You know, and, and that's, that's the question. So, but uh, so anyway, I'm going to, whoops, a chloride set effect. I'm not sure which words those are. I think we quite get up there. Oh, learn curse of eight. Uh, really? Oh, the, oh, the, uh, about curse of writing. Where? Who's who? Go? Oh, yeah. I learned curse of writing from age seven in school. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to remember. I think I learned it when I was eight or nine. I sucked at it. I always had bad handwriting all my life. That's why I made sure my children had better handwriting. I'm not sure that they do, but now with everybody just using the, you know, typing everything, I'm just, I'm not sure anybody has good handwriting anymore. So, <laughs> but um, yeah. So anyway, I'm I'm glad you came here today. Um, uh, and it's um, they say the case is still unsolved. I did not solve it today. I did not say anybody's guilty today. So. Uh, but I just wanted to bring to, to light to you something a little bit different than maybe what you, you've seen before. So, um, and I hope you've enjoyed this. And please, please do my investigation for me. <laughs> I do want to see that. Uh, so if we have the, um, the investigation uh, continuing with maybe finding the Choose Your Own Adventure stories, that's, that's the one place I think is a, is a clue that's been left aside since John Ramsey wasn't interested in that clue. I think that's the one thing that maybe we could find some more information on at the moment. That's why, I'm, that's why I want to pursue that one. I, I don't have a lot of other things to pursue in this case, but that's the one thing that's still outstanding for me. So if anybody comes up with that, please do let me know. Um, as far as uh, my books go, uh, yeah, the, the one on the left, only the truth. That one's free today. So um, to dupe, just pick it up. I'd, I'd make the rest free, but 
I, the, the publishers won't let me do that. So, but those are some of the other books you can find any of my books at Amazon, except for the Madeline McCann book, uh, profile that disappearance of Madeline McCann, which was removed from Amazon by under threat of lawsuit from the McCanns. Uh, you can find that in, um, over at, uh, uh, Smashwords or Barnes and Noble, and uh, I think a bunch of other places, Kobe or something. It's a Kobe. It's Kobe that's the name of. It. Anyway, other places have it, but just not Amazon. So, and uh, you, but you can just you can still find that one. So, I just want to say thank you very much. I've really enjoyed being here with you, and I will be back next week. I haven't decided what I'm going to do next week. If you have some, I'm taking a list of the cases that you're most interested in, and. I'm going to try to uh, do those cases, and I'll also have some from my own my own files. Um, some famous, some not so famous, and some issues just about criminal profiling and and other things you've wanted to know. So always feel free to email me or just put some put just go ahead and put a, in the comments below the video any comments you like. And uh, if you have a, a case of interest, I'm trying I say I'm trying to keep track of those and. You know, some of them I've never heard of, um, especially if you're from the UK. Uh, you know, a lot of people have followed me from the UK and you all know cases which, you know, we in the United States do not know. And uh, sometimes you think, wow, there's that many cases over there I have never heard of in my life. Um, so uh, a lot of it depends. When I take when I take a look at a case and want to discuss it, a lot of it has to do with uh, how, how much information is available, um, whether it's problematic for me to even look at it, uh, whether it become or whether it's overwhelming. To look at it to the point where I'm like, yeah, I'm not even going there. Uh, I, 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 there's a few cases out there. People go, well, would you, can't you talk about this case? I'm thinking, oh my God, no. I, you know, I, I'd have to spend half my life researching that case to talk about it. And I, and I, you know, and I don't want to go there right now. So, so sometimes it depends on how much effort it's going to take to, for me to review everything and go through the evidence and, and put on a, at least a show that has some worth to it. So, um, but, but feel free to keep uh, giving me, giving me case names and things you're interested in, or if you're interested in issues about serial killers and psychopaths and, you know, any, whatever I, I, I can, I might make a show out of it. So thank you for all being here. To, you've all been, y'all have been great and uh, look forward to some of your choose your own adventure ideas. Bye.